Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from Middle Discourses 70, title of the discourses at Kitagri and uh, the link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can read it at your end also. Basically, the context in this uh, 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 discourse is that Buddha was, land, was wandering in the land of the Kasis together with a large Sangha of mendicants. Then Buddha said, address the mendicants that I abstain from eating at night and doing so I find myself healthy and well, nimble, strong and living comfortably. You too should abstain from eating at night. Doing so you will find that you are healthy and well, nimble, strong, living comfortably. So Buddha said this and uh, and this is coming in many other discourses as well that Buddha stressed the uh, importance of uh, eating one time a day uh, as a, for a mendicant, not for lay, like lay people. Definitely there are other considerations involved. But for mendicant, Buddha had encouraged them to eat at one once a day and not eat at night time. Right? Even in the Jain tradition, if you see, they also uh, do not eat after sunset. Basically, the logic here is that after sunset, what happens is that our digestive capacities start reducing and the food that we eat don't get digested. Right? And it creates problems. Right? It just remains in the stomach instead of getting digested. So generally, it is like said, you should eat between sunrise and sunset and then don't eat after sunset. So when Buddha said this, there there has there has been this discourse says that some of the mendicants who were following two mendicants named Asaji and Punabasuka. Now both Asaji and Punabasuka are both kind of uh, 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 rogue monk monks. That means not good uh, in terms of their behavior and training. It's uh, This Asaji is not the Asaji that uh, was the part of the five uh, uh, initial uh, mendicants that got uh, the, uh, the discourse at Sanat. Uh, that uh, Asaji was different. This Asaji was different. So these mendicants were like followers of those two kind of uh, rogue mendicants. So Buddha called them uh, and they were saying that we will not follow this rule. So Buddha called them and Buddha discussed what is the matter and then, then, then in this whole discussion uh, there is this thing that uh, Buddha says that I don't say that all the mendicants still have to work, still have work to do with diligence, nor do I say that all the mendicants have no work to do. So Buddha basically said that there are seven different types of people in the world. So Buddha, what he accepted the fact that everyone is different, right? So whatever level the person is, that kind of training he needs. So there are seven people, types of people in the world. So that way they, he was trying to communicate that why I stress the importance of these things for you. It's for your own welfare. Some person which is already freed, whose defilements have ended, who has become an arahant, he doesn't need to follow. But those who are on the path, who have left their lay life into homelessness and are following the path of the Buddha, so for them these rules are important. So in this discourse, I this is an important thing that is there coming up. Seven types of people in the world. What are the seven types of people? Buddha said, one, first one who is freed both ways. Uh, second, who is freed by wisdom. Third, a personal witness. Fourth, the one who attained to view. Fifth, the one freed by faith. Sixth, a follower of teachings. And seventh, a follower by faith. So these seven types of people are there. Then Buddha started to describe individually what are the seven types of people. First, and what is a person freed both ways? Buddha says, it's a person who has direct meditative experience of the peaceful liberations that are formless, transcending form. Right? Direct meditative experience of the peaceful liberations of the formless form. That is the first, second, third, fourth absorptions. Right? And having seen with wisdom, their defilements have come to end. So they have a meditative experience also they have had. They have also had a wisdom and their defilements have come to end. This person, these person are called free both ways. I say that this mendicant has no work to do with diligence. That means that person needs not to work on diligence anymore because he has already freed himself. Right? It's like said that once you achieve Nibbana, Nirvana, right? enlightenment, there is no coming back right? from that state. So they have done their work. So they are absolutely free. They are incapable of being negligent. That's the first. Second, what person is freed by wisdom? Buddha says, it's a person who does not have a direct meditative experience. Right? of the peaceful liberations of the formless. Nevertheless, having seen with wisdom, their defilements have come to an end. This person is called freed by wisdom. I say that this mendicant has no work to do with diligence. They have done their work with diligence. So this category where 
they have not got a direct meditative experience but they have they have their insight uh, into the impermanence nonsense and suffering has been so strong that they have achieved wisdom and their defilements have totally been ended then again they do not need to do any work uh, on diligence third what is a person is a personal witness it's a person who has direct meditative experience of the peaceful liberations and having seen with wisdom some of their defilements have come to an end that means they have got the meditative experience they have got the wisdom uh, uh, have, uh, uh, but all the defilements have not ended there is some work to do right and then for those buddhists they have work to do uh, with diligence seeing the fruit of diligence for the mendicant i say that they still have to work to do with the diligence right that's the third category fourth category a person attained to view what is a person attained to view buddha says it's a person who doesn't have direct meditative experience nevertheless having seen with wisdom some of their defilements have come to a end like in category 3 the person had a direct meditative experience in category 4 person doesn't have a direct meditative experience yes through wisdom some of their defilements have come to an end that person still needs to work with diligence fifth category person freed by faith now it's a person who doesn't have direct meditative experience having seen some of their defilements come to an end and their faith is settled rooted and planted in the realized one this person is called freed by faith but still since the defilements have not come to an end buddha says that person has to do their work with diligence sixth person who is a follower of teachings it's a person who doesn't have direct meditative experience having seen with his with the wisdom some of the defilements have come to an end and they accept the teachings proclaimed by the realized one and after considering them with a degree of wisdom and they have the following qualities faculties of faith energy mindfulness immersion and wisdom this person is called a follower of principles follower of teachers teachings this meditation mendicant since the defilements have not come to an end they also have to work with diligence last category person who is a follower by faith it's a person who doesn't have direct meditative experience and and seen with wisdom some defilements have come to an end and they have a degree of faith and love for the realized one that means on the earlier category it was the faith in the teachings here it's a degree of faith in, and love in the realized one and they have the following qualities faculties of faith energy mindfulness immersion wisdom the person is called a follower by faith i say that this mendicant since defilements have not completely ended they also have work to do right so essentially what you get what we understand here is that see first second category are absolutely freed right because either you get freed by meditative experience which is the four jhanas or second is you get the freedom from insight complete insight into the nature of this creation this existence right the three marks of existence impermanence non self and suffering two ways you can be completely free right either free free by way of free two ways that means you get meditative insight and insight meditative absorptions and insight second is pure insight that way also you get free but all the other other categories since the defilements have not yet completely ended we have to come keep on working with diligence right and it is like said that the first kind of a break point uh, in the uh, in our path to the the what buddha has given us the path to the nibbana is the stream entry where we weaken the uh, the lower fetters to such an extent that we reach a stream entry that's like the breaking point and from there it's maximum seven up to seven more lives and we are bound for awakening right after that we cannot go back we cannot do any misdeeds that can take us to hell or underworlds right check out my video on various stages of awakening check out my video on stream entry right stream enterer or stream entry you will get more clarity there right so as long as our we don't have a full meditative absorptions or full insight where all our defilements have ended we have to continue on our path take the buddha as our teacher follow what the teacher says because when the teacher is saying something he is saying not out of that he wants to prove himself or something he is asking this because he knows the mind he knows how our mind works how we create suffering for ourselves so just follow the what the teacher has said and uh, we will uh, reach the end goal okay then there is this important thing that was coming out uh, in this uh, discourse as well is buddha says that mendicants i don't say enlightenment is achieved right away 
rather enlightenment is achieved by gradual training progress and practice so buddha acknowledged here that enlightenment you don't achieve it right away you achieve it by gradual training progress and practice and how is enlightenment achieved by gradual training progress and practice it's when someone in whom faith has arisen approaches the teacher understand listen to this right it's like a step by step in someone when faith has arisen friends when you feel okay let me complete this faith has arisen approaches the teacher they pay homage actively listen hear the teachings remember the teachings reflect on their meaning and accept them after consideration then enthusiasm springs up they make an effort weigh up and persevere persevering they directly realize the ultimate truth and see it with penetrating wisdom right so so first thing what happens is faith has arisen so generally it's like said that when you get attracted to the buddha what has happened is that the seed of buddhahood which is in all of us it has sprouted in you right the seed of buddhahood has sprouted in you that's why you get attracted to the realized one the noble one and friends we are so fortunate then especially if you are watching this video till now you know we are so fortunate that this seed has sprouted in us and we are in the knowledge there are people who are just banging their heads in various realms suffering continuously suffering from hundreds of lifetimes we have also suffered but now we have the knowledge the 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 which which has the potential to completely free us forever right so someone whose faith has arisen approaches the teacher pay homage actively listen not passively actively they listen hear the teachings remember the teachings that's why i always say read the words of the buddha even if it was it is one discourse a day but read the this the teachings reflect on their meaning and accept them after consideration enthusiasm then enthusiasm springs up energy springs up then they make an effort that means make the right effort right they meditate be mindful throughout the day practice generosity harmlessness and persevere persevering they realize the direct ultimate truth and see it with pen penetrating wisdom okay then there is this thing then uh, they asked the buddha sir who are we to be counted along those who understand the teaching right so first buddha ad admonished them that you know you people are not you have lost your way they said even with the teacher who values the things of the flesh is a here in things of the flesh who lives caught up between the things of the flesh you won't get into such haggling that if we get this we will do that if we don't get this we won't do that what then of the realized one who is lives utterly detached from the things of the flesh that means even with a normal teacher who is not enlightened you will not haggle like this that if i go get this only when then i will do that then how do you get into this thing with a realized teacher with someone like buddha buddha said for a faithful disciple who is practicing to fathom the teacher's instructions this is in line with the teaching the buddha is my teacher i am his disciple the buddha knows i don't know for a faithful disciple who is practicing to fathom the teacher's instructions the teacher's instructions are nourishing and nutritious and they 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 say gladly let the 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 disciple says gladly let only skin sinews and bone remain let the flesh and blood waste away in my body i will not relax my energy until i have achieved what is possible by human strength energy and vigor a faithful disciple who is practicing to fathom the teacher's instructions can expect one of the two results right but they saying two or two results is possible for a one who is practicing the teacher's instructions faithfully either enlightenment in this present life or if there is something left over non return that means person doesn't return he gets born in some of the higher realms and then he liberates liberates from there so either arahantship in the present life or a non return now buddha is saying this to the mendicants so not necessarily whether this applies to the lay people but friends we have to just make our efforts and uh, keep our efforts going on with energy putting our full faith in the realized ones teachings right so this is the middle discourse is 70 i hope there were some insights that you got do get uh, read the discourse at your end and share your learnings and insights in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya